Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Marika! Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Now imagine you are standing on the starting blocks in the year Sydney 2000. Australia has the home Olympics and Paralympic Games and you are one of eight swimmers, the fastest in the world. You have spent 10 to 12 years of your life preparing for something that is going to last less than 60 seconds. Are you ready? How do you deal with that pressure? Now just imagine you're in that situation and your pre-race ritual involved painting your fingernails and suddenly one of them snaps. <laughs> My name's Mareka. I'm a three-time Paralympian, world record holder, founder of the charity Sporting Dreams, which empowers athletes who have disabilities. And that was me at those games. And you're probably wondering why is that girl up there talking about fingernails? Well, as it happened, I competed in that race having been told, you are not likely to make it to these games, you're here for experience. And suddenly, after doing an enormous, enormous personal best time, I came forth by this much, a fingernail. <laughs> I'm here today to talk to you about how I dealt with that situation. I'm passionate about empowering people to swim to win in the race of life and overcome your limiting beliefs to self-leadership. Now, what is self-leadership? It's the capacity to read yourself like a book, to get a degree in yourself. We go to university and we go to school and we learn about subjects. But did anyone teach you, for example, how to deal with a difficult situation, like your fingernail snaps right before a race? <laughs> but in all seriousness, do we know how to get the best out of ourselves at that time of high pressure? How do we come back from disappointment? How do we get up every single day for 20 years to chase that vision of a dream that is gonna last for 60 seconds through injury, through pain, balancing family life, work and study? We all, fa we all face this. And what I learned through this experience is I was extraordinarily lucky. My journey to becoming an elite athlete started very differently to many others. When I was eight months old, I was involved in a car accident. Now this meant I was never going to be able to walk again because I came paralyzed. I don't remember this accident and it hasn't had a great impact in my life. In fact, I never even noticed I had dis a disability. I still don't think I have a disability. I had these dreams of being an athlete. I realized it may be very challenging for my family at that time. But for me, I remember one of my earliest memories being watching the TV seeing the games and knowing that's what I want to do with my life. And the thing that's made me be able to achieve that is that capacity to read myself like a book. What I wanna share with you is how you can do that. I found myself four years later going again for my next Paralympic Games and you are probably expecting me to turn up with fingernails this long, yes? <laughs> well, by now I've realized something else. I've gone through this process of learning to understand myself I know, I need my pre-race ritual. I need to breathe deep, wiggle each finger, be connected with every part of my body. And when I am, I'm ready to go in the water, suddenly the gun goes. And you're expecting me to say I jump in and I won a gold medal and we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> Guess what? There was a false start. Hand up here who's had a false start in life. We had to reinvent ourselves. Not easy, is it? Well, there was a lot of instructions getting shouted at us. Get out of the pool, stay warm, move around. And this is where I came into my forte. And I started to realize, great, I love it when there is a false start. I love it when the starting gun breaks. I love it when something goes wrong. because It's my area of strength. I handle this very well. So instead of doing what everybody else did, getting distracted, looking what's happening, I stayed in my position, stayed very calm. We re-went through my pre-race routine. I came away with a silver medal and an Australian record. It's one of the proudest moments in my life, not only because I came, overcame that difficulty, but 10 years of injury and 20 years of working towards that dream. Now for me, this was a dream that I could achieve because I'd done something I encourage you all to. I set a heart goal. We've all been told we should set SMART goals. Anybody ever set a SMART goal? Now put your hand back up if you actually achieved the SMART goal. 
notice my hand isn't even up. Um, they're specific, relevant, they're actionable, and they have a time frame. But the reason why many of us don't actually achieve them is either we're not connected to them in our heart. It's someone else's goal that we really, really want, but we don't want it for the right reasons. Or we ran out of time, some obstacle came up, and it went by the wayside. Now, to represent my country, to be there, to be the best that I could was my true heart goal. And I could um, overcome every obstacle, every false start to be there. I never won that gold medal. I actually won a silver medal, but I have a gold medal life. The reason is because I know through that process of self-leadership why I wanted that medal. I wanted to be able to help others, to be a role model, to use that platform to start a charity and to get the best performance out of myself no matter what, as well as having traveled the world and exposed myself to new experiences. So I stand before you today, not as a gold medalist, but a person who lives a gold medal life. I, I can't stand up, but I want to stand out by encouraging you to stand out too. Dive into life and make a splash. Thank you. I'm going to sit down. I'm taller than someone. <laughs> Marika, your, your, your joy and the happiness that you exude is just uh, phenomenal. You know, you've always got a beautiful smile on your face and your smile is so contagious. You can see this, this level of love that, that shines through your eyes, which is just beautiful. Uh, you, know, you know what's really interesting? Whenever I... Whenever I hear you and I'm in this proximity, I just really feel that I can believe in my dreams as well. And I do know that you have, you know, your message is so beautiful and so powerful.